<laughs> it is my duty, however, for I am sure you would not wish me uh, to uh, not to state the, the, the facts as I see them to you. It is my duty to place before you certain facts about the present position in Europe. From Stettin in the Baltic to Trieste in the Adriatic, an iron curtain has descended across the continent. Behind that line lie all the capitals of the ancient states of Central and Eastern Europe. Warsaw, Berlin, Prague, Vienna, Budapest, Belgrade, Bucharest, and Sofia. All these famous cities and the populations around them lie in what I must call the Soviet sphere. And all are subject, in one form or another, not only to Soviet influence, but to a very high and in some cases increasing measure of control from, uh, from Moscow. Police governments, there is no true... Turkey and Persia are both profoundly alarmed and disturbed at the claims which are being made upon them and at the pressure being exerted by the Moscow government. An attempt is being made by the Russians in Berlin to build up a quasi-communist party in their zone of occupied Germany by showing special favors to groups of left-wing German leaders. A at the end of the fighting last June, the American and British armies withdrew westward in accordance with an earlier agreement to a depth at some points of 150 miles upon a front of nearly 400 miles in order to allow our Russian allies to occupy this vast expanse of territory which the Western democracies had conquered. If now the Soviet government tries by separate action to build up a pro-communist Germany in their areas, this will cause new serious difficulties in the American and British zones and will give the defeated Germans the power of putting themselves up to auction between the Soviets and the Western democracies. Whatever conclusions may be drawn from these facts, in facts they are, this is certainly not the liberated Europe we fought to build up, nor is it one which contains the essentials of permanent peace. The safety of the world in Europe, from the quarrels of the strong parent races in Europe, that the world wars we have witnessed, or which occurred in former times, have sprung. Twice in our own lifetime, we have seen the United States against their wishes and their traditions, against arguments the force of which it is impossible, um, in, uh, the force of which it is impossible not to comprehend. Twice we have seen them drawn by irresistible uh, forces into these wars in time to secure the victory of the good cause, but only after frightful slaughter and devastation have occurred. Twice the United States has had a strong France. All my public life I've worked for a strong France, and I never lost faith in our destiny, even in the darkest hours. I will not lose faith now. The outcry time. On the other hand, ladies and gentlemen, I repulse the idea that a new war is inevitable, still more that it is imminent. It is because I am sure that our fortunes are still in our hands, in our own hands, and that we hold the power to save the future, that I feel the duty to speak out now that I have the occasion and the opportunity to do so. Ah. I do not believe 
that Soviet Russia desires war. What they desire is the fruits of war and the indefinite expansion of their power and doctrines. Uh, but what we have to consider here today, while time remains, is the permanent prevention of war and the establishment of conditions of freedom and democracy as rapidly as possible in all countries. <coughs> our difficulties and dangers will not be removed by closing our eyes to them. They will not be removed by mere waiting to see what happens, nor will they be removed by a policy of appeasement. What is needed is a settlement, and the longer this is delayed, the more difficult it will be, and the greater our dangers will become. From what, what I have... There never was a war in history easier to prevent by timely action than the one which has just desolated such great areas of the globe. It could have been prevented, in my belief, without the firing of a single shot. And Germany might be powerful, prosperous, and honored today. But no one would listen. And one by one, we were all sucked into the awful whirlpool. And surely, ladies and gentlemen, I put it to you, surely we must not let that happen again. can only be achieved by reaching now, in 1946, this year, 1946, by reaching a good understanding on all points with Russia under the general authority of the United Nations organization, and by the maintenance of that good understanding through many peaceful years, by the world instrument supported by the whole strength of the English-speaking world and all its connections. There is 